Hi developers, today we will talk about cross-platform development in Mac. Mac is an extraordinary device as you can debug almost all of the platforms available today. We will also use Visual Studio Code and its impressive ability to do remote debugging to achieve the remaining two platforms we cannot natively do on Mac. Those will be Windows and Linux. In this example that we are going to explore today, we are going to use a demo application that is divided into two parts. One, it's backend, a standard REST API written in Go, and it's frontend, a cross-platform application written in Flutter. We will not be exploring the technology today. This will be for another time. In this demo, we got a user reporting an issue in our application, and we want to fix it. As you can see, the issue that the user reported was when starting the application in Linux, the application gets stuck on the splash screen. We have a screenshot that shows us the problem. So let's try to understand what the problem is and how to fix this in our application. For this, we will open our backend in Visual Studio Code so we can start it in debug mode. To start it in debug mode, we will simply press F5 and wait for the application to be ready. Okay, the application started and as you can see, it is listening on port 5500. The next step will be to open our Flutter application. We will open it in a new window so we can keep our backend right. One of the things that I want to show you is how many platforms we will have available to debug out of the box natively. If I press here, this will show me all of my available platforms. We will have iOS with the iPhone 14 Pro, which runs on the iOS simulator. We will have the web, which can be Chrome or any web browser, including Safari. We have our desktop, Mac OS, and we have Android, in this case with the mobile phone, Pixel 6. Let's start to see if the application even starts. For this, we will use the iOS platform. Same as the backend application, we press F5 and wait for it to build. Our application just started and everything seems to be working fine. But let's add the city to see if we can get today's weather forecast. It seems to be fine. So the problem is not in the iPhone and our application seems to be working just fine in that platform. Currently, the issue doesn't appear on the iPhone, so that might be just on the platform reported by the user. In a normal situation, the developers needed a physical machine with Ubuntu installed and then run the same kind of environment we have here to try to debug this. With virtualization and the help of Parallel Desktop, this is now way easier to achieve. As you can see, I already have two pre-configured machines ready to run Flutter, one on Windows 11 and the other one on Ubuntu. To start debugging, I simply can start my machine and wait for it to get ready. This is one of the things that developers sometimes misunderstand. They believe that virtualization is a slow process. And as we're gonna see, it's a fast process. In just about 10 seconds, I will get my virtual machine up and ready and ready to log in. Let me just log in and we'll be ready to debug. We will need to use Visual Studio Code in server mode to debug the application. That's very easy to achieve. We just need to open the terminal and type in code tunnel. 
Once you see this message, you are ready to go back to your Mac again. It is just like moving from one application to another. To remote connect, press on this blue icon and choose connect to a tunnel. This will show you the list of the available online tunnels that you have. I will choose my virtual machine and this will start a new Visual Studio Code instance. I need to open the same project and because Parallels shares the folders, that is a very seamless process. Just select the folder that I want to open, press OK, and it should start. OK, now you'll see a difference if I press on the button to list the available platforms. We only have the web and the Linux desktop. That's because while I'm working from my Mac, VS Code is actually running inside the Linux machine. So we only have the same desktop as available on that machine. This is actually what we need. Let's then start the application in debug mode. And that's the same process as we did for the iPhone. Just pressing F5 and waiting for it to build. Okay, so we got that exception on this platform. Let's debug it like a regular application. I see that it fails downloading an icon. And if I look at the response code, I get a 500. Let's just have a look at the URL that we get back. You can see this is the backend URL. So let's check if this is actually working as expected. We're using Postman to try to test it. And this was when getting icons. So let's paste in the URL we got from the debug and press send. And yes, I get exactly the same error from it. So let's inspect our backend to see where the problem is. If I now go back to my backend, I can have a look at the logs and see if I can spot the problem. Okay, I can see that I get an error, which is a valid OS. And that's when getting that icon from Strange from Ubuntu. So let's see if we can spot the problem. There is a file that is called icon services. So let's look at that. And on the function get icon URL, we only have a case for Linux. And that seems correct. Ubuntu is a distribution and not an operating system per se. So we should be actually getting Linux and not Ubuntu. Our problem then seems to be on the front end. Before we actually go and trying to fix this, let's first test if getting the icon with the operating system Linux, everything works fine on our backend. I get back to my postman and I will simply replace the operating system with Linux, and yes, I get the 200 back. So the problem does seem to be on our front end. Let's now try to fix our application. So this is where we were getting our exception. And on the base URL, we can see that there is the word Ubuntu, and that's what seems to be the problem. I go to that function and it, see that this is more or less the same as we have on the backend. But on the is Linux, I have the word Ubuntu. If I now fix this to report back Linux, let's test if this actually fixed the application. For that, I just can restart the application, go to my virtual machine, and it seems to now be working fine. Let's just add the city and see if we can get today's weather report. Okay, we now have our weather report and 
the problem seems to be fixed. Let's go back to our application. We can now stop this and we can actually disconnect from our remote tunnel. This will close that instance and we'll restart Visual Studio Code as expected. Let's now close our VM as we will not need it anymore. That you can simply select it and close the window. This will actually put the machine in the suspended mode and it can have some advantages. As if I start the machine again, you're going to see that it is a bit faster to start and it will be on the same state as you left it when we closed. That can have some advantages in situations where we just need to release a bit of resources and come back to it. Let's close it again. Close this window and open our application again. Now that we have opened our application again, let's just test if we did not break the other platforms. For that, we can simply go to the list of available devices and we can start choosing. Let's go with macOS. Same process as for any other platform, we can press F5 to start compiling. Okay, our application started, seems to be working fine. Same process, let's add the city. And we can see the weather report. So this platform seems to be working fine. Can go and close the application, select a different platform. Let's now test it on Android. Again, pressing F5 to start it and waiting for the application to be compiled. Application started. Repeating the same process. And we can see the weather report seems to be working fine. We can go and close the application and let's just try one more, the web. Selecting it there, pressing F5. And it started. Very similar to all the other ones. Let's do exactly the same test. And we can see the weather report. Now this is running in Chrome, but if we wanted to test it in Safari, again, one of the unique things about Mac, we can just open the Safari window, paste in the same URL, and we can test it in Safari and see if it actually is compatible. As you can see, pretty similar. Let's do exactly the same test just to be sure. And yes, both of them work fine. Let's go back to our code. This seems to be all the tests we can do. We can actually run the application in almost all of the available devices. So we are pretty confident that the problem is fixed and we can just go and close the code. The other advantage of having this development platform is that the changes that I did in the virtual machine and while I was in the virtual session, I brought in because of the share folders between the virtual machines and my Mac. You can see that the fixes that were done in, remain here. So this concludes the demo for today. And as you can see, Parallels Desktop makes your life easy when debugging platforms that are not natively available on Mac. The other advantage that we saw is because we are using a virtual appliance, then sharing this environment is extremely easy. I had one Linux machine already.
prepared for debugging my Flutter application. But I can easily send that image to my colleagues and they'll have the same ability as I do to do the same as I just did. They do not need any extra settings or any extra setup. This also helps on onboarding as you can have pre-prepared developer machines ready to provide your new startups so that they can have all of the tools available from day one without very complex setups. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again.